So now we're going to have a look at the raw onion. And it's quite possible that I might start crying, is that right? So when you cut up an onion, the onion juices, they loosen up the, the mucous membranes and that's a clear indication that this raw onion is very good for, for colds. So if you've got a cold, cut up some onions and you'll breathe in the onion fumes. But what I'm first of all going to show you is what you can do for a sore throat. You can finely slice the onion, so get a few fine slices. So when the grandson or the teenager or the son puts his knee through the sheet, it's a good idea to fold them up into, into squares. This is a good size square. So you make, we're making an onion poultice for the throat now, sore throat. And you just lay those lay those little onions down like so and then you pull the cloth over top and bottom and then put that round the neck and then you might cover that with a scarf or you might cover it with a little bit of plastic and then a scarf and you can leave that on overnight your bed partner might complain about your perfume but it eases a sore throat. I've had mothers say, my child's got strep throat, strep throat. I think, strep throat? What's this strep throat? It's just a sore throat. But obviously they've had a test and it's streptococci. It doesn't matter what it is, this will help it. So my children had sore throats, they had colds, they had everything that children usually get and I never gave them drugs. I just used to use these simple natural treatments. And I see them with their children today, they're doing the same thing to their children that I did to them. Why are they doing that? Because it works. And now I'm going to show you what you can do for a cough. And when, when a child or an adult, whatever age, gets a cold, it's not uncommon that they might cough for a few weeks. In fact, I've had ladies email me and say, my child had a cold and it's two weeks later and they're still coughing. And I write back and say, that's right. <laughs> they will, but you know what? It'll pass, it'll pass. When the cough stops, it means it's done its job. So we're going to put this on the bottom of the feet. And we get a cloth and we put the chopped onion on. Depending on the size of the foot, maybe this was for a little two-year-old. And you put the foot, the skin of the foot, straight onto the onion. And then you'll wrap this around the foot. Or what some people will do is put a sock on and just put it down the sock. But then put a plastic bag on that and you leave it there all night. And I remember being with my daughter and her little boy James, he was three at the time. He had a cold and he was cough, cough, coughing, cough, cough, coughing. She gave him a hot bath and put him to bed and he coughed, cough, coughed and cough, cough, coughed. After half an hour, still coughing because we just thought, oh, he'll, he'll fall asleep in a minute. But we could see he, he wasn't going to fall asleep. So we got him up and we put Got a small onion, cut it in half and put one on each foot and uh, put a sock over the plastic bag, I think, and put him back to bed. Not one more cough, not, not one cough all night. You almost have to uh, experience it to see how amazing it is. See, the biggest pores in the whole of your body are in the soles of your feet. And anything that touches the soles of the feet, the, the body will absorb. That's why I'm very fussy about my footwear and about my socks <laughs> because you have nylon socks and your feet get hot, your body's going to absorb that nylon, the chemicals from the nylon. I'm also careful in the summertime what I put my feet on. I always have leather sandals. And this is also why um, barefoot walking is so good. You've probably heard about earthing going barefoot on the grass. I'm probably a bit fussy about where I go barefoot on what grass. <laughs> I'm not going to do that if there are dogs and have been putting their droppings there. There's a bit of common sense there. Now I'm going to make an onion cough syrup. So there's lots of things you can do with onion. So I've chopped up an onion and I'm going to put approximately a teaspoon of honey on top of there and then another layer of onion and then another teaspoon of honey and another layer of onion. I'm starting to cry. 
If you don't cry when you cut up the onion, that's a worry. It must be a, an irradiated onion. <laughs> and you keep doing this until you've filled your jar. This is just the right amount. And then you let that sit for 24 hours. After 24 hours, you will have a syrup. So this time tomorrow night, we can have a look at this and you'll see that there's a syrup formed. So at the moment, we've just got this thick, gooey, sticky honey. Now on top, I should do about two teaspoons. At the moment, we've got layered in the jar, thick, sticky honey. And if I move it, I don't see any fluid there. I've just got thick, sticky, un sticky honey and chopped onion. By the end of our lecture tonight, when I tip that up, you'll see a clear, um, fairly runny fluid. That's the syrup starting to form. And by tomorrow night, that's 24 hours, you'll see a, a fluid that comes up to about here. It'll be like an amber, very runny fluid. And that's your onion syrup. And you can strain your onion out and you can keep that cough syrup in your fridge well, I don't know how long you can keep it in the fridge because it never lasted long in my house. But a German lady said, I've had a jar in my fridge for eight years. <laughs>